uh, evangelism amongst those from Muslim backgrounds. Uh, so that's uh, next uh, month, God willing, uh, October the 20th, yeah, sorry, September the 24th. So let's pray and then I'll hand over to Josh. Father, we thank you for this time to be together this evening time. We do pray that we would be your people for this time to be able to respond to the issues that arise in our lives. And uh, we do pray that we would be wise in uh, responding to the issues of artificial intelligence and all the uh, uh, things that flow from that. So pray for ourselves tonight, pray for Josh tonight, pray that we would be equipped and uh, enabled and built up uh, to be for your glory, honor, and praise as we pray in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being here. And um, we're going to spend this evening with a topic that is, has been introduced already, artificial intelligence. Now, those two words have a lot of baggage, and we're going to unpack what they mean for the first part today. Before we do that, just want to give you a couple of uh, quick things that hopefully settle us and make us aware of what we're planning. So the first thing is just to be really clear, this is this is a topic which I'd say before my dad gave me the brief that I was going to do this earlier this summer, I probably knew the smallest amount possible about. And some of you guys here might have a similar mindset. You hear about it sometimes in the news, you just don't know what's going on. So I just want to make sure we're super clear. I am not an expert on artificial intelligence. I'm, I'm very, very new to this topic. Um, really interested in it, though, having looked into it. I think we should be interested in it as Christians. I'll explain why as we go along tonight. That leads me to my second point, which is that I'm sure other people in the room have other thoughts and know more than me about this topic in different ways. So it'd be fantastic to sort of just come in with your thoughts it's a bit of an open one, a bit more informal one tonight. So if you've got your thoughts, your questions, your um, disagreements of what I'm saying, then just come in because it'll be really helpful to hear what other people have to say. We'll have a little bit of time towards the end to do some questions uh, and I'm going to call it a questions and response because I'm not going to give any answers probably. But the hope is that we might get a clearer understanding tonight about how we as Christians can interact with the changing world we have around us and one of those biggest changes, which is the rise of artificial intelligence. So let's start with that question then. What is artificial intelligence? What does it mean? Um, let's have some thoughts. What do you think you think, what do you think of when you think of artificial intelligence? What comes to your mind? What What's in people's minds? Any thoughts? What, what do you think it means? Go on. Robots. Robots, right, yeah, yeah so we've got robots. Okay, so we, when you think of a robot card, what do you think of by a robot? Yeah, smart, smart. Are you, are you thinking of like a kind of moving around? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very well. Okay, any other thoughts on what I was going to tell you? What do you think of? Computers with a mind of their own. Mm, okay, computers. So we've got robots, we've got computers with a mind of their own. Interesting. Yeah, we'll talk a bit about that, what that means. Any other thoughts? What about when you phone someone up and you speak to the robot? And right. Gives you so a talking voice. Someone is like a help, a helper. Any other thoughts? Robot that can do my cooking for me. <laughs> so a practical helper, yeah. Some some jobs you just don't want to do, you can use a robot for. Brilliant. So all all things that are are really connected to this topic of artificial intelligence and um the rise of robots, not just kind of physical robots, but as we've thought about computers, which are doing programs, which are helping us with our day-to-day -day tasks is, is just all around us these days. I'm sure you guys can think of loads of examples of that. Now, I thought what would be helpful is just to watch a kind of three-minute clip about what AI, artificial intelligence, I'll call it AI a bit through the tool, guys, because that is the way a lot of people do refer to it today, what AI is and the types of AI that we have today <laughs> and what are the types of AI that is potentially going to happen in the future. And this will just hopefully unpack the uh, topic for us before we go on. So uh, enjoy watching this for the next three minutes or so. Every we really love, there's talk of the upcoming technological future, a world controlled by driverless cars, robots, deep fakes, and AI. But what exactly is AI? And how will it affect our society? To dive deeper, let's take a look at the facts. 
Avon stands for artificial intelligence and simply means non-biological intelligence. Intelligence is often defined as the ability to accomplish goals. Early AI systems like the one that first put humans in chess had skills programmed by humans, while today's best AI instead learns from larger pools of data. Today, AI is getting gradually broader skills. And like human intelligence, it's now used in every industry. AI advises us with chatbots and virtual assistants. But you even recommend who should have a job, a book, or a goal. AI helps us write and translate languages. It entertains us with art, music, and poetry, and perhaps tricks us with deep things. It dominates trading on Wall Street, it diagnoses disease, and accelerates science. For example, AI can tell us if the strands in this image were cut, the balloons would fly away. This is the place where you just get turbocharged by these AIs. Online, AI recommends what ads, products, social media posts, and search results can show us, and what to block or filter the spam. On the road, AI. I support ride sharing, navigation, traffic management, and autonomous vehicles. It powers ever more powerful surveillance and ever more autonomous weapons. The original goal of AI was building artificial and general intelligence, or AGI, which, like a human child, can choose to learn any skill at human level and therefore do any human job or robotically environment. Surveys have shown that most AI researchers expect AGI within decades, but a strong difference is opinion. If AGI is built, then since it can do all jobs as well as humans, it can take over AI development too. This raises the controversial possibility that AI will start recursively self-improving, repeatedly doubling its power much faster than on a human R&D timescale producing super intelligence that leaves human intelligence far behind. Some view this rapture of geeks with excitement, while others fear that humanity will lose control and get replaced. You've probably seen fictionalized versions of this in popular culture. I don't know what your emotions were when you were watching that. Some of you probably excited about what's going on, some exciting things that you were seeing there, or about some people being a little bit scared. Self-driving cars, I guess they scare some people, but there's a lot of things that we don't know about the future which might be developed. And um, hopefully that was a nice kind of introduction to what AI has done so far, what, what changes it's led to, what kind of things it can help with, and then the things that might well be coming on the way. Let me just break those two categories down again. So let me make it really clear. I know some of this can be quite confusing. So at the moment, we have one particular type of AI, which we generally call narrow AI. Now, narrow AI is basically an artificial intelligence that has been created to imitate or mimic a human doing a task. So it's specifically for a task that a, a human would do, uh, a robot is being um, trained through a process called machine learning, where they basically learn what they should be doing by a human saying, that's good, that's not good, that's good, that's not good, almost like a dog, training a dog. And the robot learns by being told through commands, this is good, that's not good, to how to do a process really effectively. So let's take, for example, one example in, inside the world of doc, um, hospitals. So what will happen would be, let's say, um, you're trying to diagnose, let's say, coronavirus um, and see whether lungs have coronavirus inside them. What you might have is tons of photos of lungs from across the world on this database. And you as a human have told the computer, this is what a lung with coronavirus looks like. This is what a lung without coronavirus looks like. And you just put all that data into this massive database. And then... Instead of having to use a human and having a bit more possibility for human error in trying to diagnose whether some lungs might have coronavirus, you basically get a computer to kind of work out through the database that it has whether the lungs of a particular patient 
has coronavirus by comparing it to the data that it's got available. And that generally actually in hospitals tends to be a more effective way of running things. So using robots can allow other doctors to do other jobs, et cetera. And so there's quite it's a real improvement for efficiency. Now, when I mention that, can anyone think of any potential dangers with giving these kind of responsibilities over to robots and computers? No empathy. No empathy, yeah. yeah. So that's an important one when we're thinking about people-related tasks. You might have noticed that um, some artificial intelligences have been used to help with things like therapy, um, which has been a bit more controversial because obviously robots don't have the ability to empathise. Now, one of the counter-arguments is that for people with quite severe trauma, they might struggle to talk to a human about it. So having a robot to talk to might make it easier, but then you raise into huge questions about whether that's a wise thing to do, considering it's our job as God's creations to look out for each other and to steer the world. So there's a big kind of debate there. But in terms of this particular example, we've also got the problem of jobs being lost when robots take over, which we'll talk about. And we've also got the, the possibility, and this is quite a big possibility with a lot of these things, that artificial intelligence can make mistakes. It's not flawless. It's a system which is based upon learning. And um, while it may have less margin for error, there's still lots of chances that it has mistakes and misinformation as well. So let me go on. Ask your intelligence to say, if you put the plan of action, what it wants it to do, it can only do what you thought it to do. Mm -hmm. It can't, like we, we can go, oh, I'll make a mistake here. We can go back to plan bed, da, da, da. we can move around. Yeah, but a robot can't do that. It's a really helpful point. Now, while a robot can learn over time and become better at the task it's doing, uh, based on humans training them, that they don't they do have a particular task that they're programmed to and they can't, you know, maybe work out if they've done something wrong, especially when it comes to a moral issue, if they've done something in a bad way. They might have got to the outcome they were hoping for, but they won't have a moral part of their decision-making process. Sorry, sorry. My brother's got a Tesla, and you can basically go to sleep if you want to. Well, you're not meant to, but like if you wanted to, you're probably good. But the problem with that is, I think it does tell you if you've closed your eyes for too long, and it tells you off, tells you to wake up. But it's still a computer at the end of the day, isn't it? So, like, if something falls off the car or, you know, something goes wrong in the computer, there's still a massive danger that can be involved in these sort of things because it's, you know, not got a human telling it. Like, yeah, there's, you know, there's a, a, maybe a lack of ability to adapt to problems that yeah. happen. Um, it's the unpredictability of the world around us. And I guess this is why people are so keen to train AIs to become better. And that raises questions about the more you train an AI to replicate human intelligence, the more close you make an AI to become like a human, what does that lead us to think about what humanity is like? Is it different from these robots that may one day become really close to human intelligence? And I think as Christians, we need to make sure we have really strong views on the difference that we as humanity have. It's almost like going back to the tree trees in the garden. It's like it's intelligence. You're um, you're going with the tree every moment of good and evil, but you haven't got any wisdom. And ultimately, mm -hmm. intelligence hasn't got the wisdom, has it? So I think any um, progress that we make has got the potential for good and for evil. Yes. It's really important, yeah. It's helpful, yeah. So just to really unpack these different situations that we use AI and we'll move on to thinking about how we as Christians should view it. So we've got, obviously, as I've already mentioned, this kind of situation in a hospital, which I'm sure a lot of you can understand the benefits that AI might do in helping with surgery. Um, Alexa, classic example of an AI that can help you in the home make life easy. You know, when you're on the, driving a car and you can ask Alexa to do a phone call or something like that, you don't need to use your hands. Um, there's also AI systems on our phones the whole time. Um, and you might notice in the video, they're constantly using the data that we provide them to plan what we see. You might have noticed that. Have you guys noticed when you're, you know, you've looked at something or you've, sometimes even weirder, you've talked about something and then it pops up on your phone mm -hmm. as like an advert and you're, you're confused. Does anyone else have that before? Does anyone know why that 
Does anyone know why that works? So it uses, if you have your Siri on on your phone or whatever your phone type has, an audio assistant, that, that will listen to what you're talking about and use that to provide um, adverts or things that are more geared towards your interests. Now, the danger then is that you're finding yourself more addicted to your phones because the things come up that make you want to look at your phone. And also, more importantly, um, there's danger definitely in governments using your data in ways that they shouldn't. And um, that's becoming a bigger issue nowadays. I was just talking earlier on about in China, governments using AI to, to work out who um, is from the Uyghur Muslim community and using facial profiling to work out who they are so they can um, um, identify them and then and obviously persecute them. So, so there's so many dangers with, with governments which aren't in wise positions of authority using this data badly. But then sometimes, you know, data can be really helpful for informing what we should do um, in terms of producing the right goods that people are interested in. So um, there's balances to these things as well. So um, yeah, Alexa, uh, Siri as well, as we've mentioned. Um, yeah, you've got you've got also this, <laughs> this other app, which was mentioned in the, um, in the video of a, a, a thing that basically produces things that you ask it to do. Does anyone know what that's called? No. Chat GPT. Has anyone used Chat GPT before out of interest? Hey, a few people, what did you use it for? Uh, I just want to talk to you that the team, the team that I was using it to do about 500 words of the talking devices. Yeah, so you can basically ask it to provide a prompt. Now, I just thought I'd do something quite funny. So, Zach, I'm going to ask you to do this. I am... Um, if I hadn't decided to write a talk tonight, I could have gone on ChatGPT tonight and was given it a simple prompt. And you'll see what I, what I wrote down in the little prompt, which you'll, you'll see live happening in front of you in a moment. So I wrote a prompt, but you can't really see it from where you are possibly. And I said, write me a talk to a church about the intersection of Christianity and artificial intelligence. And, and this is what, what it gives me. So just press the uh, enter. Okay, go down to the bottom, keep it going. Do you want to just scroll through that slowly, Jack, so we can just see what, what's happened there? And do you want to zoom in a little bit? Now, in many ways, it's a fascinating tool. It's exciting. I don't know how it makes you feel. It's, it's one of those things that actually you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I do this a lot. I use chat GPT a lot for, for like if I write an email and I don't word it that well, I'll say make my email sound better. So it's all the stuff that I wanted to say but in a much better way than what comes out of my mouth. Um, and then if it's a bit too wordy, I can make it shorter. I just I just say make it shorter. It's very clever and you can learn from it, but it also makes you not think for yourself mm. and you become lazy. So like, that's that's my problem at the minute. I'm like, oh wow, this is just too easy. It's time efficient. I've learned a lot from it. I can then use it, you know, for certain things, but you don't use your brain like mm. we used to. Mm. <laughs> There's certainly dangers on there with um, stopping us from being proactive and thinking about things and um one of the things that i i noticed when i was doing that was was how easy it is now for people just just to use that in academic institutions as well when they have an essay which they've been given i think it's really important that we think about this particularly in the church context because um i was listening to something interesting about songs as well that were being written by ais for christian contexts which were you know being used and i think it's really important that as Christians, we understand that we are not just writing words and using words that 
are kind of randomly generated. But when a talk is being done and a um, song is being written, for example, it's vital that the Holy Spirit is involved in the process of making that talk or planning that out. And if we remove that from the process, we remove in many ways one of the primary ways that God does communicate with us. And it's not just through those the mere like arrangement of random words that AI generates, but it is through the process of thinking about what God wants to be said and communicated. And it's just really important that we we re- recognize the dangers that these things have. Human God has 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 called on humans to be his particular representatives, hasn't he? He hasn't made robots his representatives. And he's not called on humans to give over power and responsibility to these other things. He's called on us to govern. And so we need to be careful that we can use tools to help us, but we can't give over our responsibility as the stewards, as the people called to lead the creation. And it makes a person better than they are, rather than they What they hand in is not there. And it hasn't come from them, so they haven't done it. Yeah, it makes a arrangement. But the other thing, uh, you know, like just with uh, taxi number something, people just now, all the while, was clicking taxi. It's all abbreviation. Abbreviation, abbreviation. You don't, it's all little signs and sounds. All abbreviations, so consequently, people can't string a sentence together. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it, isn't it? No, you're right. Yeah, that's a, a negative effect of tech for sure. Yeah. Making everything quicker doesn't make us necessarily better at doing things, does it? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, the product of the environment learns, because it says my life will increase. There's definitely things that AI should make us concerned about. And I think we'll just spend a little moment later on discussing how it relates to end times. I thank you for that question. I think it is something we need to to think about because, yeah, that point about knowledge increasing is certainly something that is is proper summer. Now, now, before we get into kind of specific questions that you might have about Christianity and AI, how it interacts, um, I just want to think about the benefits and the dangers generally about AI. Now, I've already talked about the kind of types of AI we have now, um, what we call narrow AI, things that are given particular tasks, things that in some ways don't have a mind of their own at the moment. They're just given a task to complete and they're very good at completing those tasks. Now, you might have noticed that there's a type of AI which has been kind of talked about as a idea for many years you know in films things like the terminator ideas of like an ai which is called like an artificial general intelligence or in the kind of literature it'll be called an agi and that's essentially a an artificial intelligence that can essentially act like a human so it has the ability to think of what tasks it wants to complete um accomplish tasks decide what tasks to complete itself and that kind of artificial intelligence, which is a much potentially much more concerning idea, because it has much more power, has not been made yet. But there are some people who think, you know, in the next few decades, we might come closer to making this happen in the next you know, 30 to 50 years, possibly, maybe longer, maybe never. But what does that what does that have ramifications for? Is is certainly a, an, an important thing to think about. We'll get onto that in a moment. So so benefits and dangers. We've got what kind of benefits can we think of, guys? What kind of things does artificial intelligence do that we can think of as beneficial? Are there any benefits of it? Time efficiency. Good. Yep, saves you time. It can be more reliable at certain tasks. Like the hospital kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic. And now you have help create your medications. Or is that an interesting point? Yeah, it can help us in the in the medical procedures we do at the moment. Research doesn't tend to be what AI is used for because AI essentially does what we tell it to do. 
at the moment with the kind of data that we already have. Yeah. The idea, one of the dreams of having something like an ATI would be to be able to do some research using robots that kind of do that. Yeah. But the, that's something, again, that is kind of out of the reach of something yeah. like AI at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, human error is kind of taken away from some processes. Now, those are some fantastic benefits, and I think it's really important that we listen to this topic. And when you hear about artificial intelligence and robots, you don't think that's all negative. There's so much that these technologies are doing that are fantastic for making our our world work and help people, especially people who need extra help in many ways to have kind of robots that can support them with their whatever difficulties that they have. There are, however, significant dangers. And I think you just touched on a few of those. Um, one of the things that you might come across um, recently, we've talked about it already, is, is the danger of jobs being taken away. So things like AI taking jobs. Does anyone know about the strikes in America? Um, so actors and writers are striking in America because their jobs are being taken away because they're being used by AI who can basically um, do like writing scripts for films and, and the acting and yeah. And also, uh, you know, we talk about basically about um, some of the contracts they basically like buy your voice and buy your image. And so they're also fighting against that because now they don't really need the actors. They just buy your body and your... Um, and your voice and with AI, they, they create yourself. I mean, they, they create them, they move them and everything. Now, it's an important one because actually it carries into another topic, which you might have heard of, of another word to do with AI. And these are all big words in our news. But the idea of a deep fake, which is essentially picking up on what Anya mentioned. If you look at um, a video of someone speaking now on the internet, you really don't have an idea if it's an actual video of them speaking. A lot of the time, um, you might have seen these videos go around of a politician saying something and it comes out that this person has actually never said anything like that. There's just a video that's been used to uh, replicate that person's face and voice and it sounds like them speaking and it's not them. And, and that's had huge problems for, obviously, dishonesty, spreading misinformation about things and people using things for propaganda, which are untrue. And so that's another real big ethical danger people in power can use and and even people who don't have these kinds of big positions of power they can so put things out on the internet and it spreads around like wildfire so thank you for picking that up yeah uh, the chat the chat the chat gpt speaking to the very it's another danger isn't it yeah, it's a real danger of, of laziness as robots come and take jobs. I think one of the huge things that, again, how Christianity interacts with this topic is that we're called, aren't we, to be working hard for the Lord, to be using our bodies, to be using our minds. And while the creation of these robots might be an incredible demonstration of human minds working hard, there's just a real danger that in a world with tech, and we've seen it, haven't we, in the last few years, how increasingly humans are not working as hard potentially and are giving more over to to technology that we need to be very aware of that yeah so they're not needed and so the um you no know, it's gone sorry <laughs> it's on the yeah um it's also the source of like mass frustration the amount of people I've spoken to so I just want to speak to a human being. You know, you're live chats, so you're trying to sort out problems with a bank or somebody. Yeah. And you're like, I just want to speak to somebody on the phone. Yeah. It like it exa exasperates you so much. But it's near impossible now to get a company to have someone to speak to you live on the phone. Um, so I think it's just, yeah, just frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, sure we all relate to that on the <laughs> website with the chatbots. Yeah. It's uh, the, the level of suicide in young men. Especially recently, because they can't get jobs. Mm -hmm. If you take even jobs that are there away, that sounds good, but you get more depression, more mm -hmm. people will feel worthless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AI hasn't got emotion, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. and hence they can't relate properly, and so they don't have the moral standard as to what is right and wrong. You just 
pushing button and it's, mm. it fits that's it <laughs> and so real danger as we develop more ai um and you might say businesses want to use ai to let's say help maximize their profits um the danger is if you give an ai a prompt like that what kind of things might it do to maximize profit well it might sabotage other companies it might manipulate people to try and make them buy things products it might you know send viruses to our computers and try and make them lose money and whatever means necessary and and the danger is we rely on ai to do our tasks we don't have moral creatures governing and uh, it can cause problems in the law courts you know, you've got the barristers and your solicitors trying to collect up the facts and the figures that you're dealing with your case. And you've got this artificial intelligence dancing around. And, you know, so they have to dig and dig and dig to get the full facts, don't they? You know, I mean, I've even heard of that. It's the same mm. Yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, we're the only people with mental illness, aren't we? Because with, the, um, with lockdown, there's a lot of mental illness going on in the world. And I'm sure it's something to do with the fact that they've had to sit and work from home and they're frustrated. And I just can see they're all being mentally ill. Yeah, it's important to find the connections between these things and to wonder where that comes from. Obviously, there's lots of things in our world which lead to those kind of things, yeah. And there's so much, as you also know, misinformation and fake news that's out there because of these platforms that's encourage you might know about the algorithms on social media which promote things which might get views but not be true and you might read things that you like the sound of but aren't actually true and truth can be undermined by so much of this as well which obviously we need to protect as well and we just don't know where the development's going and it's actually quite concerning i watched an interesting video in my prep about a guy who's um creating ai a developer and he was just saying about how he actually wanted to be building the ai so that he could have ai inside of him and so that he could be partially have an advanced ai in his mind so he could be essentially superhuman and that and that idea is connected to a whole idea called transhumanism that you guys have yeah. heard of which is essentially the idea that we might not just create these AIs as separate entities, but maybe even plan to have AIs merging with humanity, which of course raises huge issues. And there's a, the, the important the thing that we need to look out for is, again, what are we as humanity, and as, as God's creations chosen to bear his image, Playing with these things is so, so dangerous and really, really unwise. Now, transhumanism, I want to, at the very end, just talk about, because it's really interesting how it ties in to actually the beautiful message of the gospel. And uh, there's a, a wonderful video I want to show you at the end. Um, but here's maybe a chance for us to now move into thinking about how Christianity and its teachings help us. And I wanted just, just to turn to, I think, the most important passage that can help us understand how we as humans should interact with AI. And as a classic passage from Genesis 1, so if you have a Bible on you, just have a um, look at Genesis 1. Now, a lot of people ask those questions, don't they, about what if artificial intelligence reaches human intelligence? What if these robots take over? What if they become like us? Um, and I want us to remember what God says about humanity, what God says about who we are, not who these robots are. So let's have a look at Genesis 1. I want to just read from verse 26 to 27. And they're familiar words, but may them strike you once again. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps in the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, I'll carry on. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. 
So how are we distinct as humans? Well, we're made in the image of God, aren't we? And that profound idea has to be the foundation of our view of humanity, that God in some way has bestowed upon us an incredible value, but also an incredible responsibility that we should be his image bearers, the people who represent him on earth. We should be the people who are called to subdue the earth and have dominion over it. And that means to rule the earth, doesn't it? And it says every living thing, doesn't it? And I wonder, some people do constitute maybe as an idea that AI could become like a living thing in its mind. And, and we need to understand what, whatever this progression happens, we're called to rule. And God has <coughs> promised that we are his interferers, no one else. And I think this ties in with another question is that do we therefore need to fear that AI is going to take over, that we might be what we might call in existential risk, that humanity might be wiped out by robots? And I think that while it is a fear for people who don't have faith, we can be sure that God is going to intervene and that he has chosen that we as humanity are his image bearers and he will rescue us from whatever situation we are now does that mean that we are therefore to not care about this and let whatever happen happen i think we have still a massive responsibility to look after this world and make sure we don't endanger things but we can trust that god is in control and that he will intervene and he has a future and he's a he has a plan to renew this this world we live in and he has a plan to make a home for us as humanity and I think we need to hold on to that hope in a world that has become increasingly hopeless in many ways. And hope is a real distinctive of the Christian, even more so when people are talking about existential risk than ever before with climate change and things like that. And I'm AI. It's important that we stay firm on what Christian hope is, is that God is in control. He will intervene and he's got a plan to restore this place. He knows what he's doing. And he's promised and sealed it in history, in his res- in Jesus' resurrection. So we have that hope. And that is a, it's a powerful thing to hold on to in a world where things might seem hopeless to some people or dangerous. I want to open up to any of the thoughts or questions that people might have about this topic um, before we go on to our sort of final video. As we've, got, we've got quite a, 10, 10 minutes or so. So if there's any questions or thoughts that you had. Yeah. In, that, in that last point you just made mm-hmm. about being able to sit back and like let it kind of wash over or whatever, how would you say to Christians to counteract the artificial intelligence by coming in? Is there anything we can do to counter it a little bit? It's a really good question. Or maybe other people might have thoughts on this one as well. Um, I think in terms of counteracting artificial intelligence, the developers of artificial intelligence are obviously people who are in cold corporations way further from me that I can, you know, we can't influence them, but we can talk about artificial intelligence with the people around us. And we can remind people that, you know, as Christians, we have this view that it's wonderful to be creative and to create tools that can help us as humanity. And God has given that power to humans to do. And to create is in many ways to image God in his creativity. So we should redeem the creating power we have and not create things that lead us to negative outcomes. And things like the danger of being lazy. We can mention these things about the dangers of artificial intelligence, even just in the small scale in our lives. And I think talking about how those dangers might lead to a worse world for all of us, but also about how God has given us an even greater calling that we shouldn't be thinking about the dream world where humans step back and let other people do, but but humans rule and humans lead. And especially we should be thinking about how we can do that. As Christians, as image bearers of God, we shouldn't be letting, I guess, AI take the lead, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any, any other questions? So do you think that Christians would go into doing AI yet? I think Christians definitely should be involved in, in the sphere of developing technologies, you know, helpful things that can help 
um, make big differences, you know, in the world of science and medicine, AI is doing a lot of good. In some ways, Christians should be helpful in bringing to these debates the balanced view that we shouldn't just be trying to create a species that might take over like we as humans ought to be creating technologies that help us but don't take over from us so i think it's important that christians join that conversation and develop sensible ai probably not be involved in my opinion in developing something like an artificial general intelligence a kind of robot human that kind of thing i think we should be really careful about but there's certainly types of AI which I think humans, Christians should be, you know, involved in developing. Yeah, I think they need to be forward to that. We kind of almost can't get away from it. Mm. Kind of don't have an awful lot of choice. We've got to almost, we're growing up with this now, like it is coming our way everywhere. It's holding it on a daily basis. And mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a difficult one to get away from in many ways. I suppose I always think about like whenever the washing machine came out, those women that were by the river scrubbing away were so happy when the washing machine was invented and the time efficiency that that then gave them to do other things. Um, but yeah, like you said, you don't want to, we don't want to be lazy. And, and the thing is, it can also make you not creative in many ways because with AI, you can say, make me a picture of. Uh, you know, a space picture with an astronaut and some rockets to the right, and it comes up and it's made a picture, but you haven't created it. Some this thing has painted it for you. And again, my friend says it makes you look good, but actually, it's all fake. Yeah, it's not real at all. Um, but we are going to grow up with it. Like that's yeah. it's not unless Jesus comes back. It's important. Is, yeah, yeah. We love me. <laughs> No, I'm glad because of the that we have in our phone and it's there and we use it daily. So you just try to find a balance, you know, not with the same time, you have to go all that sort of deep, you know. You know, try to do it for yourself if you can, yeah. but just give it a balance. <laughs> and it's important for us to adapt to the world that we're living in and be aware that as things change, that we must learn how to work with the world we are in and not pretend we're in another world but as we're saying yeah being careful not to get over too much I mean, it's been used for a long time in um, aviation that's yeah. artificial intelligence right. alongside all the other stuff yeah. you think years and years ago they took the idea from a bird to get some craft out you think it's a tiger moth you know and a stick tire and a doodle bumps and all that <laughs> But now we've got all these great big jumbos, Airbuses. So they've had to use all that form of technology to get them up into the air. Yeah. Um, in a way, it's amazing to think that God has actually given humans these sort of minds to be able to come up with something like this. I wouldn't have a clue where to start, you know, but there are people out there that yeah. have got the intelligence to be able to figure out all the computer. You know, it's actually been created by humans, but the scary thing is it could take over from humans. It's fascinating. And it's absolutely right. I think that's a really important thing to protect is the wonder at what humans can create is is something that actually ought to make us wonder at how human creativity points us to the creativity of God in its purest form. And I think um, we ought to see when humans are being creative, that that is a wonderful sense in which we are, you know, showing that we are distinct as not just one of the other animals not 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 just another being of nature in this world but as people who are meant to image, image god and his creativity and it's it is one of the things that we need to remember that we do live in a a sinful world where chris where, where humans were where once those beautiful creative pursuits were pure we live in a world where human pursuits for creativity can become damaging and self-focused, as we can see in a lot of these AI systems. I think one of the biggest dangers is um, probably the church itself in terms of when people pick up with like, like relationships. So like this artificial intelligence, even I, like, I'm not great with it, but I find myself not engaging with people. 
Mm. Um, even the church, you know, like the church says, like, you know, for wisdom and counsel, seek the older people, the older generation. And my, my go to is my Alexa or my Google because that will teach me what I need to know quickly mm. and efficiently. Um, but just, I think, in, even your WhatsApp and your email, it's always, it's not, it, it's not face to face interaction. Yeah. Which is always like quick, fast, and whatever. Um, and also, the Bible talks about relationships, it's so important to meet with people and be with people, uh, being part of God's family. Yeah. Uh, and really, we suffer because we're just isolation. And it, and it affirms that isolation, you know, the mental health, the suicide, it all kind of it just falls into itself. And it's a dramatic subject matter in terms of um, just even the simplicity of just being a family and talking, which it kind of modifies that. It's really helpful. I'm sure we all have fallen this that trap of using Google to search for something or using Alexa to find out something that we could have, you know, been relying on each other for and depending on each other in a healthy way for. And obviously that doesn't mean and there's no place for these things, but it does mean, especially when it comes to issues, I think, of, of spiritual guidance, that we ought to really be careful to not be involved in relying upon artificial intelligence for any sort of spiritual mm -hmm. guidance in our lives. Just yep. wondering if um, there's a lot of faith in churches. This, um, I've never heard of Chat GPT, but if anyone can start a church and say, give me a sermon, write some songs, mm. um, they're not obviously they're not anointed, it's not really spirits. I'm just wondering how many faith churches are found. Yeah, that's no, really a good point. It's really worth it. And, and I think that requires prayerfulness, doesn't it, and discernment as Christians. And we need to be really prayerful when we think about what we're listening to and uh, and where not everything comes from a good source. And doesn't mean there's not good to take from it, but we need to be listening to what God has to say. In, um, in Romans, it said that humans create, uh, they create more, more evil. If I'm more than creating like, more evil, and then in Revelation, we hear about how um, like there's going to be an antichrist that, that people follow and think that they're a genuine thing and stuff. And um, so I wonder if, if it could AI be part of um, like God's plan for the end of the world. And and like I watched a commentary a while ago about how um, the guy who develops AI was talking about how um, when AI gets to the point where it's actually more intelligent than humans, that's the point where you need to worry because then they start to figure out that they actually they don't need humans. Mm -hmm. So then they figure out a way to destroy humans. Mm -hmm. um, so could that actually be what's going to happen? And could that actually be, you know, how the world? Yeah, we don't know exactly how these things will happen. I mean, it's really helpful actually. I was going to bring us over to Revelation just to just have a little look at our if we turn to Revelation thirteen. Um, And we look at the um, second beast <laughs> in verse, uh, I'll read from verse 15. Um, and it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. So this is Revelation 13, verse 16 now. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand of the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. And you see previously in that section things about performing great signs. And I think it's important that we, as Christians, we, we, we don't know what these prophecies are particularly or directly saying and we need to maintain a level of being tentative with making any clear this is what's going to happen statements um, but there are many things about ai that we need to be head careful about and especially we think about the way that it could take over and <laughs> kind of idea i guess of like a, a kind of a human being with these special powers and a world government in the end times which which runs things there's certainly things that can hint of what the world of ai might lead us into i think that ought to make us careful so i don't know what anyone else thinks on that, but i think it's really important that we i i feel like it's said as somebody who's involved in computers to perhaps the other side of this 
this goes perhaps back to the deep fake issues that the first the way this could develop is actually the internet becomes completely unreliable that it will effectively kill itself because there will just be everything will be fake you can't rely upon anything and so there is a, a, almost as if man that thought he gets too big and then it will all, it, it, this will kill it can kill itself and we can't rely upon anything and we have to go back dare i say we have to go back to our books <laughs> yeah mm. you know because it's just destroyed itself yeah that's perhaps the other side yeah yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Humans trying to get to to your eyes, a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And when humans try, yeah. 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 And there's a lot of danger that we have and over reliance on these things. I think these things can become, yeah. Almost self defeating the more we the more we use it. Josh, would you say it's um it could be healthy to a church to do a media? I've heard a church do like media fasts, um, computer fasts, or even the individual to say I'm going out without my phone for a day, just to kind of break that habit or that reliance. I think it's exceptionally healthy, for one hundred percent. Um. Doing that in community is brilliant as well because it also leads people to be more accountable to each other in a in a more tangible way. So I would I would encourage that in whatever way you can, and maybe that's something you can be thinking about how you can promote that. Um, obviously, we've spent time thinking about artificial intelligence, in particularly tonight. But artificial intelligence is a, a kind of a, an outgrowing of a world of social media and technology that's just taking over our lives increasingly, and um, the more it takes over our lives the more we, I think, drown out the voice of God. And that is hugely dangerous. We are drowning it out enough in the business of our lives without technology. So yes, I would say definitely building in that regular mm -hmm. patterns of keeping your phone away whenever that is, whether it's in your bedroom or on a Sunday, <coughs> whatever patterns you have. That would be the contrast to having a um, a mobile phone fasting day is that please let people know that you're doing that because they might they're trying to try and contact you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Just do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to finish by, by a couple of things. The video will come in a moment, but there's so much in this that gives weight to the truth of Christianity because if we think about the world that artificial intelligence is potentially leading us leading people to think about what might happen it certainly makes the narrative of revelation and the kind of future that that predicts much more reasonable to the majority of people around us they think it sounds quite likely that there could be some sort of superpower that takes over and leads people away and the bad things so i think we need to understand that what might sound to you sometimes you think of revelation i think people are never going to this is that um, in the world and actually the kind of things that Revelation speak about are things that the world is speaking about now and I think we also need to remind ourselves that Christianity speaks a, a much better message once again a, a message of hope mm -hmm. and a message of um, humanity being more than just mm -hmm. processes that lead to end results like these robots are but but moral agents with a huge worth, the image of God, that worth. And, and this, this last video um, will just help us to see how humanity is, is um, how the, me the message of Christ can help us when we think about AI. So I think it's about, I think it's about, five, it's about five minutes, Jack, five minutes. Sounds brilliant. And we'll, we'll watch this and then we'll close the project. So this is Jordan Ellis, Professor, speaking um, about AI and Christ.
biblical focus at the end. So my final question to you, um, how does our aims with AI pale in comparison to what God has already accomplished through Christ? Well, that's a very important question. Uh, and what it hints at is that there's an irony about all these developments. Uh, take, for example, uh, a world best-selling book, Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari, an Israeli historian. He's not a scientist, but he's grasped worldwide attention. By his book Homo Deus, which is Latin for the man who is God or a God man. And he says that the there are two major agendas for humanity for the 21st century. Number one is conquering physical death, so that humans, although they may die, they don't have to die. He says death is simply a technical problem, and it will have a technical solution. The second thing is to enhance human happiness, and his program for doing that is by Drugs, drugs, genetic, drugs, genetic engineering, engineering, all this kind of thing, man, making new man and transferring man from the animal, from, the animal from, which from which he's come, according to Harari, from, uh, from, from Homo sapiens, from sapiens, sapiens into so Homo Deus. So in other words, into turning animals. humans into a kind of now, God. But the interesting thing about that is that's, that's a very ancient agenda. It starts, agenda. On, page it starts three, on page two, two or three of the Bible. When, the when the temptation came to the first humans. They were told by God's enemy. Were told by God's enemy that God actually wanted to suppress them and didn't want them to realize their full potential. So they should eat of the forbidden fruit, and then they'd be as gods. There you are, the man who is God, knowing that they did not realize. They did not realize it would be a half truth because the knowledge of good and evil is not knowledge you want to have. Ever since the lie has been spread about by all, kinds of, by all kinds of philosophers, thinkers, and even religious that people, that God is trying to suppress you. you. If you want to rise to your full potential, the best way, to full potential, the best way is to get rid of God, be autonomous, and, autonomous, realize, and realize that you can be a God, and now with all this addition. Now, with all this addition. now it's very interesting that, that this is a human attempt to become as God. The Christian message is the, the, Christian message is the exact that. opposite. It tells of that. us that we can't do it. It tells us that we can't do it. The attempts to do it have been absolutely catastrophic. For instance, in the eugenics of Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia, the attempt to make a new man led to the death of millions of people. We can't reach God, but God can reach us. And it's not the Christian message is the opposite of the age. It's not that you can reach God by all this technology, but it's God who can reach you by becoming human, the word became Hi. flesh. Harari's Hi. agenda is, Harari's agenda to, is conquer to conquer physical people death. Mention and when that to me, people say, mention well, that to me, I say, too well, too he's far too late. late. And they say, what do you I mean? Said, I said, the problem of civil death death physical death has actually, been actually been already been solved 20 centuries ago by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here's the good news. What that implies is that Christ is still alive today. And if we're prepared to trust him and repent of the mess we made of our own lives and those of others, if that's what has happened, he's prepared to receive us and do what? Give us what the Bible calls eternal life, a new life and a new power that will survive death. His resurrection guarantees the resurrection of the believer. So as I speak to you, on this podcast, I am utterly sure, sure that, one day, die, that one day, if I die in the meantime, because I believe that Christ will return at some stage, if I die in the meantime, I will be raised from the dead. I don't have to go into a, a cryogenic um, uh, freezing chamber uh, and wait in the hope that someone will be able to upload my brain. All these things are so speculative, but I believe in the Christian message because there's powerful evidence for it. Uh, in which I've argued in many of my books, videos, and all this kind of thing, and we can't do today. But as a scientist, 
and as a Christian believer, I'm utterly convinced that Christ has the solution to the problem of physical man and to the ultimate enhancement. Because when he returns and raises believers from the dead, this will be the ultimate upload. And when I realize that here in Scripture is the true version of what is parody and artificial intelligence, I sensed that I had something to say to the Christian community to encourage them that they have something to say into this world where AI is a major buzzword. Yeah, I hope that encourages our hearts and leads us to, to long for those days when we will be raised to new life. Um, and, and it just answers the longings, doesn't it? AI is a a symbol of the longing of human hearts for some sort of transcendence, um, some sort of something greater, and they're looking in the wrong directions. Um, people who are hoping for that in AI, um, a defeating to death or a greater humanity, we know that that is something that we can look forward to in Jesus in the future. And so when we see people looking for these things, we can be assured that they are really looking for jesus and uh, we can point them to him um let's pray together let's let's finish by praying and um, do continue those discussions um, as we go into dinner lord thank you so much for the chance for us to consider how you have done what humans are all through all time longed for which is that you have made a way for death to be defeated lord you have made a way for humanity to become the true humanity that we were made to be lord and um in the, the midst of a confusing world where things are changing all the time we pray that we would stay steadfast knowing that we ought to be listening to you um hey pray that we'd be wise in our use of technology lord pray that we would use it in a way that honors you um, that we would be involved in creativity in the right way and we would lead to, to um to, to good outcomes when we use the technology that we do. I pray that we encourage each other in this, Lord, and help each other to stay focused on the main thing, which is making you known and lifting you high, Lord. And I pray that as we navigate these things, Lord, that we'd be encouraged to know that in a world where there's hopelessness a lot of the time and fear about how, where these things might go, Lord, we can trust that you have a plan and mm. you will restore this world and, and you will raise us to new life if we know you Lord. Mm -hmm. and so we pray that we would encourage others um, to see that as, as their hope for themselves Lord. And we pray for a good conversation today and thank you for your kind provisions for food so in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen.